Hi everyone, Nicole here. Another Founders Friday video. Thank you so much for coming back. This week we're going to do a book review. Remember, every week we're going to do book reviews or beauty product reviews. You know, books are beauty. So this week, books. And I'm very excited to be doing this review because it's taken me a year and a half, I kid you not, to finish this freaking book. It never takes me that long to finish a book. So this book really challenged my vocabulary and also just really expanded my mind because I had to really pay attention to the narrator's voice. And what book am I talking about? Virginia Woolf, Mrs. Dalloway. There, I might do a video of like some of the most difficult books I've read. Um, that sounds like a good idea because there's a few on my shelf that I'm, they were difficult, but they were, they challenged me correctly. Okay. So Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf. As you can tell, it's not a very long book at all, but if you, the narrator's, the narrator's voice constantly keeps changing. So it sometimes loses you as a reader. So Mrs. Dalloway, Clarissa Dalloway, she is the main character of the book. And the whole story just takes place one day, just one day. And she's upper class, um, you know, wealthy, lives in London, married into um, to a guy that works in politics. So knows, you know, who's who, very popular. And she's throwing like this nice gala kind of party. And the whole day is her planning the party. Now, I mentioned that the narrator's voice keeps changing because the, narr the narrator's voice will either be Clarissa's inner thoughts or her actions, talking about what she's doing throughout that day. Um, and then, quickly, it goes into the inner thoughts or the actions of another character, like so one of her friends or her husband or her daughter. Uh, what they're doing throughout their day and then their inner thoughts and when I say very quickly I mean very quickly the transition is like one sentence this book has no chapters and the first couple pages you're like who is talking but it's no one's talking it's just her thoughts and it's just rambling and it's, you know it's basically if you were to write out everything you did throughout your whole day and what you thought what you did and if you put that in a book and then what your friends that day thought and did and put it in that same book it goes back and forth you know so you get very confused and one of my favorite scenes um, really highlighted the underlining lesson of this book and the underlining lesson of this book is not everything is what it seems um, how you perceive someone is not how they always perceive themselves um, and so that was a very interesting lesson to write about. Um, this book is very, it's a very great book on human nature. So the last scene is the party. And her one, she has some old friends that come to the party, Sally and Peter Walsh. Now Peter Walsh was a lover of hers. Basically the guy she dated before she married her husband, she chose her husband over him. And it seems like he's been heartbroken about that ever since. And keep in mind, her daughter is like in her 20s. So this dude has been heartbroken for like 20 years. And I feel like you need to get over it. Um, the whole time I was reading this, I was just like, you know what, Peter? Like, get your shit together. Just get it together. Um, you're a grown man. Stop crying. But whatever. Um, so the last scene is they're at a party. And his inner dialogue is you know he's thinking to himself that clarissa is judging him and then it goes to 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 clarissa's inner dialogue and she's thinking that peter's judging her and they're so weak with one another and they care so much about what the other person thinks and so they're trying to act like how you know, to counteract what they think the other person's thinking. So, when, you know, like when you think someone is thinking of you negatively, you try to act better and be nicer to people, but they, that person probably 
doesn't even think of you negatively, you know? So there, there's a lot of that going on at the, um, at the end of the book and I really enjoyed reading their inner dialogues because they're so, they were so like concerned with what the other person's thinking of them and it's like, stop, you are adults. You're like in your 40s, I think, by now. Like, just stop, you're fine. But um, it just shows that insecurity goes throughout any age. And this book was written, oh, wait, I mean, Virginia Woolf is, when was this book written? Um, copyright was 1925. So people have been insecure with themselves at least since then, 1925. That's great. We have not really progressed as human, as human beings. Um, but yes, I strongly suggest though reading this book. It is going to be a challenge. Um, but it will help with your vocabulary and just really, really expanding your literacy love. Because if you are a true reader and you love novels and you just love reading for the sake of reading, it's always good to read books that put you outside your comfort zone. And this book really put me outside my comfort zone. Um, so I, why do I keep saying, um, sorry. I hate when I say that a lot. I was a communication studies major. I love public speaking, so I catch every time I use filler words, and so that is really, really bugging me. Sorry for going on a rant about that, but I hate it, and I'm gonna. Ah, uh, okay, off that rant. So, again, and so is another filler word. God damn it, Nicole. All right, read this book. It is a very interesting book. And thank you so much for coming back again. I do apologize for cursing. I don't think God damn it is a curse word, but I don't know what you think. So I'm sorry if you think that's a curse word. Um, I apologize for that, but it's not. So I don't know. Anyways, love you guys. Come back next week. <laughs>